The views and opinions expressed in this recording do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Logan City Council. Logan City Council does not make any representation of the accuracy of any such views and opinions. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers and listeners should be aware that this narrated story may contain names, images and voices of deceased people. Our words, our stories. A Gamilaray language story by Greg Dreis, recorded on the 20th of July 2019. Yeah, Menenda. My name's Greg Dries and I'm from the Gumaroi and Uwaliai mob um, country out in southwest Queensland. We go all the way down through to New South Wales, down around the Tamworth area. Um, my mum is Lila Knox, so I'm a part of the Knox mob. Uh, to all you Knox families out there, big yeah, Menenda. I'm an author and an illustrator, so I travel all around Australia and sometimes overseas talking about stories. So it's obviously very exciting to be here today talking about our traditional languages in a fantastic showcase of that this year. So I use language all the time. I think it's beautiful um, for children who are my target audience to hear Indigenous languages or, as I like to remind them, hear more of them. A lot of the kids get surprised to hear that they live in a town or a suburb that is an Indigenous language and, and the more they talk about things that they used to, the more they, their eyes open as to how many Aboriginal words they actually know. So in my job, using traditional language is really important. So I might share with you guys just as a bit of an example, a, a little bit of a story. As everyone knows, it's a bit of a primary school favourite, Tiddalik the Frog. I love reminding kids that it's not actually really pronounced tiddalik. That's all a little bit European. So if you put the, your tongue on the roof of your mouth and you, and you say tid like that, so instead of tid, um, but did, and that K on the end of it, most, most kids use it as a real hard K, tiddalik, but he's not actually having a lick, that frog. So it's more of a soft K, so tiddalik. Um, so when we put it all together, it really shouldn't sound like tiddalik. It should sound like Dilly. So Dilly is a frog that from back in the dream time, like many creatures around Australia, was a giant. So we got bones in the museum there in Brisbane of giant wombats and giant kangaroos. But this is a story about a giant frog named Dilly. Now Dilly, he was a greedy fella and a tricky fella too. So the first part of the story that I love to share is where he, he goes up to Yamanon. Now Yamanon, he's a wombat. Now. Yamanon loved his billabong. That was his favourite place to have his little camp and, and, and he was almost like a protector of that little part. So when Yiddele come up there trying to trick him for some of that water out of his thing, he told him that Yuray, now Yuray's the sun in my language, so he told him Yuray's going to drink up all your water. And obviously Yamanon, that wombat, he didn't think that the sun could drink his water, so so Yiddele got him to watch and wait and watch how that water started to go down. So to Yamanon's amazement, he thought, oh, what can I do to stop Yuray from drinking up all my water? So Yiddele, he said, well, I'm a nice frog. But obviously, you know, those fellas, and especially those little kids, we all know he's not very nice, this fella. He's just tricking, eh? So he, he said, I'll put some in my pouch. But, but Yamanon, he was a bit worried about how dirty that pouch would be with water in there being in his tummy. But Yiddele, he was like, nah, it doesn't go in my guts. It, I got a clean pouch just, just for water. So he showed him some of that beautiful clean water in his pouch and he said, I'll just put a bit in here and when your Ray drinks up all that water out of your billabong, I'll put some back for everyone. And he thought, oh, that'd be nice. But that tricky little frog, well, not so little frog he was, eh? That tricky frog, he just kept drinking it and drinking it and he used that dreaming magic to get bigger and bigger and bigger and before you know it, that billabong was empty. And then in time he saw a creek in the distance, so he bounced off towards that creek and then he told the fellas there the same little trick about Uray drinking up their water and he used that dreaming magic to drink up all that water and get bigger and bigger and bigger. He was a ginormous frog by this time. So Bunda, that kangaroo, Bandar came along and he was saying, you've got to put that water back in there, otherwise all them little fish there flipping around, they're going to die. And he just looked at Bandar and just went, mm-mm. He had his big cheeks full of water. He wouldn't even open his mouth to say anything, but mm -mm. 
So then Dinawa, Dinawa, that's the emu. So Dinawa come running across, go, look what you're doing there. I see all these little yabbies flipping around. They need that water. He put that water back in there. And he just looked at him with his big cheeks and went, mm-mm. So then they saw Eel as the water was coming up. Poor old Eel was flipping around, needed some of that water. And Eel was saying, oh, please put that water back into my creek. But that big greedy gilly, he just said, mm-mm. So that's when Wombat finally caught up to him across from his billabong and he said, hey, everyone, he's not talking because if he opens his mouth, all that water's going to come out. He's stretched right out to capacity, this fella. So we just got to get him to open his mouth. And I bet you all you kids know how they did it, eh? They decided, we've just got to make him laugh. So the first one, that bunda was bouncing around, pulling faces, pulling ears and making all kind of cheeky faces while bouncing. Everyone else was laughing, but not that jiddly, eh? And then Dinawa, Dinawa started poking out that tongue, hopping up on one leg, spinning around, making silly womba noises like bleh, 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 going real womba, eh? Womba means silly in my language. But anyway, he still wouldn't laugh, he just mm-mm. So then even Frillneck Lizard, he was trying to make him laugh with some jokes, but no good. So then Eel said, hey, I can do a funny dance. So Eel started twisting around real fast and real deadly. And then she started getting real low on the ground, twisting low and slow, high and fast. And then she went, oh, this is so much easier to do this dance in the water. So then she thought instead of just dancing, she started making all kinds of shapes too. So she turned her body into a boomerang, trying to make him laugh and doing all different shapes. But then... That poor old eel, she got twisted right around and caught herself up in a knot. So then she said, oh, quick, somebody help, get me out of this knot. Normally when I'm in the water, I wouldn't be in a knot. But then Jiddly was like, no, don't help her, that's funny. Or should I say, that's not funny, do you get it? Not, she's stuck it, no one help her. And then he didn't even realise as he was laughing and laughing, that water kept coming out, kept coming out. And then that dreaming magic just started making that Jiddly get smaller and smaller and smaller. So today, when you see them jiddly frogs, lots of people think that that's just gammon, eh, just tricking, but those jiddly frogs are real. They live out in my country and they get a big pouch full of water, about, about as much as a cup they can put inside their pouch. And when it's real dry time in the drought, they go to the lowest part of the creek and they can dig themselves down up to about a metre underneath where the last bit of the water in that dried up patch of mud there was. And they've still got a bit of that dream time magic with them today. Even around that mud, they don't have to drink that water from underneath the ground in. They can suck it straight through the skin of their pouch and that purifies the water as they go. But today, lots of people know that story and we talk about never ever be greedy like that jiddly frog, eh? But there's another part of that story that we share out on country too and that's when we take people down to those creeks and we get the kids to walk along and we look for that brownest patch in that creek and then we get everyone to sit down. Then we do what's called a stick story. So instead of like today of me doing illustrations in a book, you just get a stick and then you draw it there in the dirt and you walk around those kids and you keep drawing and telling that story. But then at the end, we get all the kids to sing that jiddly song. In that jiddly song, we use that didge and we get this song going. I'll, I'll have a quick little play of the didge, lads. And when we start playing, we get all the kids to put their hands up in the air and we say, eh, jiddly! And then with the music and the clap sticks, we then bring those hands down together. As you hear the didge and you hear those claps, you tell each of the kids to move their hands together and slowly bring them down this dance like this. <laughs> And when those clap sticks go real fast, by that stage, everyone's got to get their fingers on the ground and run them around all over that dried up dirt like little spiders. And what we're trying to do, because back in that dreaming story where Jilly tricked everyone to get the water, well, we trick him back today. So as we're doing that, that didgeridoo represents that rumble of thunder up in the sky. And then all of those movements on top of that dirt and all those fingers running around like little spiders, they're not trying to be spiders, actually. They're just trying to be like little raindrops. And then underneath that dried up patch, if there's any jiddly frogs down there, they start hearing those big rumble of thunder and those vibrations above and those drops of water, and they think... Oh, no, nah, Gullingen, I'm thirsty. So they head up to the top and then as, as they start to use their big powerful arms to claw their way up to the top, we can grab them 
and we get our little culmin, our little wooden bowl, and we squeeze a little bit out of that pouch by gently, very gently, um, putting our thumb underneath that pouch, and then that forces him to open up his mouth where that opening to that pouch is, and then out comes pure water, which we share around, and that's where we obviously tell everyone that this story is all about sharing. But really importantly, we make sure we share a bit with Jiddly too. We don't want to be greedy like that fellow in the dreaming, so we leave a bit for Jiddly and let him go, and he'll bury himself back down underneath that creek and he'll wait for the next time it rains. But hopefully the next time it rains, it'll be a real rain. Eh? It won't be that gammon rain that we do when we're trying to trick him back. So that's a, the a way that I know the story of Jiddly. Um, and obviously using our language in amongst that and, and sharing that with other Indigenous kids, other fellow Gumaroi countrymen or even non-Indigenous kids. And I've even told that story overseas in different countries and the kids all love it no matter where you go. So sharing language in there is a really, really important thing to do. And that's why it's a wonderful thing that this year we're looking at taking this opportunity to share Indigenous languages. So for you fellas out there listening, Get on out there. See how many Indigenous languages you know. You might be surprised you know a lot more than you think you do. So to finish off, I'm going to say until next time in my Gumaray language, and that is Yalu Ninda. See you later, everyone. The Our Words, Our Stories project is a deadly digital communities program supported through funding from the State Library of Queensland and Telstra. Dream big with the State Library of Queensland and Telstra in partnership with Indigenous knowledge centres and local councils. The Our Words, Our Story project is in recognition of the United Nations International Year of Indigenous Languages. Logan City Council Libraries acknowledges that language heritage and knowledge always remains with the traditional owners, elders, language custodians and other community members of the respected language nation. Logan City Council gratefully acknowledges the time, resources, stories and support of the following. Greg Dryce, award-winning author, musician and storyteller. Robert R. Wing, the Logan City Council Library's Deadly Digital Communities Project Officer. The Queensland Narrating Service for providing digital recording equipment, sound production and quality assurance. The Noyamba Meta Advisory Group. This recording features didgeridoo music performed by Greg Dryce. For Mobo Jarjum, Tomorrow's Children, copyright 2019 Logan City Council. <laughs>